The big football story of the week has, of course, been David Moyes and Man United. My next guest has a special insight into that. Moyes has been a great friend of his and stood by him through probably one of the most difficult times of his life. Uh, he's also one of Ireland's best-loved footballers, representing the country a staggering 110 times. Would you please welcome the great Kevin Kilban? <laughs> Don't be all modest. You are the great Kevin Kilban. <laughs> of course, no, I was reading really really you're not. more comfortable with abuse than you are with praise, aren't you? Yeah, it probably has been that, yeah. yeah. Probably. I've had enough of it in, over the years, so it kind of makes me have. feel at ease a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, apart from being a friend of his at all, I'd say you, you must have empathised with Kevin Kilban or, or with the, um, David Moyes over the last world. I, yeah, I did empathise myself a little yeah. bit over the years, yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, no, with, with David, of course, yeah. I mean, I've known him, what, 20-odd years now, 20, 22 years, I think it is, so... I did, I felt for him, I felt for him, not just this week, but the way that the season's gone for him, because, you know, he's been ridiculed, he's been, he's been told how poor he is, how bad he's been, and, um, and he's not, you know, basically isn't, he's, he's, he's still a good coach, he's still a good manager, but it just wasn't meant to be for him at Manchester United. Do you, do you think, because you, you're interesting in, in your book uh, about what you did when you were a young footballer mm. on the YTS training scheme, just tell them the kind of stuff that you had to do then. Oh, I mean, it's totally different from what it is now, I think. Yeah. When, we, when we were kids growing up, um, and I suppose it's the same probably in any industry now, I suppose, but, I mean, we had to do everything. We had to sweep stands after games, clean all the litter away from the grounds. We had to make sure the pitch was right. We had to paint, paint dressing rooms, uh, clean boots, uh, wash kits, all these sort of things now. And it seems very, very, you know, low maintenance, I suppose, for, for, um, for certainly from a, a player's point of view, but it's totally different now. The, the, yeah. the, playing, the players now are a kind of professional from when they're very, very young, and they have it's a different, different game, it's a totally different uh, game. And than is it was that 20 what part ago. of what we were seeing here, like, which is that the, these are you know, cocky millionaires, like, and this guy comes in then and tries to put a bit of discipline on uh, them, they're like, Who are you? Uh, there's probably an element of that. I, I mean, I think at the top end, yeah, I think lower down the level, certainly over in England, and, and uh. And so, and towards say a lower a lower level of football, it's, it's a different game. It is a different game than what it is right at the top. Mm. Like going back, I think lads that's in academies now, I think they're in from such a young age, from when they're seven, eight years old, and they're training three and four days a week from that age. So when they get to fourteen, fifteen, they train every single day of the week, and they have everything laid on for them. They have boots cleaned, they have kit washed for them, all ready for them, ready to go. And it, that's why it is a different game. It is, and I think yeah. that when when they get to a certain level, if they do make the first team, because the fallout so high, it's, I think it's about a 98% fallout, 99% yeah. fallout. So when they get, it, it's only the cream that do right to the top, and that's why you're seeing a different breed of footballer. I think that, or certainly a breed of sportsman in general. Yeah, and and like, do you, so do you think that balance of power can maybe be out like that 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 it was for David Moyes a little bit that he the gaffer should be God, and yeah. that in this case. He, he mm. wasn't with these guys. Well, I think they come off the back of having such a successful manager. They yeah. had such a and, su and success themselves as players as well. So they were probably looking to David to come in, you know, prove to us what you can give to us. How how are you going to make me better? I'm a multi millionaire, multi Premier League winning title. They've won, they've won European trophies, European cups. Show me what you can do. So he was always onto a, onto a loser before he started. I think simply because of of where he come from. Yeah, and listen, you don't think was it like it could have looked to an outsider tonight. As if the boys yeah. basically have been on a work to rule, and they yeah. decided tonight. Like they had their, they had the man they wanted, Gigs tonight yeah. in charge, and they decided let's play a bit of football for yeah. Gigs. Well, I suppose it does look a bit like that. It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I think with, certainly with Ryan Gigs, he, he does command the respect of that dressing room. I'm sure of that as well. He's the he's the most decorated uh, player in the Premier League history, most decorated player in English football history. So, I think you've got someone like that coming in to in. And to take over, it's ultimate respect straight away. And yeah. I think are they going there, to settle there, there for anyone? That, are they going to settle for anyone else? Um, well, I think I think it's too soon for Ryan Giggs. I've got to say that I yeah. think it is too soon for him. I think he's literally he's not even started coaching yet. He's just on the, on the coaching ladder himself. I think he he'll get these four games under his belt. I think till the end of the season, then he can maybe take that back step again. I'm sure it's going to be someone with more experience that's going to come and take over. But We've seen it before, when you get a momentum going and you get the crowd right behind you, like he's got right now, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be difficult, I think, then for, for him to step back away from being in and around that first team. Yeah, because that, that welcome he got today. Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, 
The, the, the other side of that welcome is, of course, the fans can be, can be savages as well. Animals, Paddy O'Shea called the Kerry fans one time. But, <laughs> but uh, you, you've seen that yourself as well. You yeah. went, you, when you went to Sunderland, you're in the Premiership yeah. and everything, and it all went well for about two days, and then the abuse started, That's probably didn't it? true. That's yeah. very true, yeah. And I think as well it's difficult then to shake that off. I mean, uh, just going, probably going back again to Manchester United, I was talking to Phil Neville last week, talking about Marouane Fellaini, who'd gone into Manchester United for £27, £28 million, pounds, whatever, 30-odd million euro in the summer. And he was saying it takes six months to, to get you find your feet. I don't think you get that luxury now. You, certainly a club like Manchester United. So yeah. certainly from my, own, um, from my own history of playing and things like this, I got a lot of abuse very quickly because I wasn't playing well. And if you're not playing well, it's difficult to shake that off. You and try... you found the harder you tried, yeah. the, the, the worse it came Yeah, got. definitely. Yeah. And I'm sure that's what a lot of players have felt. It's not just me that has yeah. been through it or other players. And they, but like, it's fairly nasty too in ways that people might know. Like you, you had to leave nightclubs and stuff and, yeah. and, your, and your wife Laura was like, Can you get, get out of Sunderland kind of thing. Yeah, you do. You get a bit of that. You, that was, no, that was in Newcastle. Oh, that, actually. Newcastle that was not sorry, the Newcastle right. fans, yeah. But I mean, I think, yeah, you do. You do it, it can be like that, yeah. You can get yourself into bother. I think now as well... I don't envy the, a young player coming into the game as well. You know, we spoke about before that it's all different for them and I think they're probably put on a pedestal. But, you know, you can't go out. If you, if you go out and have a drink with friends, you suddenly consider you've got a drink problem. If you go out with, and, you know, there's yeah. pictures taken of you, you, you're always out clubbing. So it's very difficult, I think, now for a young sportsman or even sportswoman now in general to try to get any sort of grounding because you kind of put on a, sped, a pedestal very quickly and yeah. it's difficult then to get, to get away from that. Yeah. And actually, David Moyes was a guy who, who looked after you a lot when you, when you were a young player. And, yeah. and from the beginning in Preston, he gave you extra coaching and everything, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. I mean, even when he was playing, he, he, was, he was wonderful with me as a young lad. Um, I mean, again, I go back to the point, he's, he's a very, very good coach, excellent coach, in fact. But I think with me personally, just from that, that little human touch with me as a kid, you know, telling me how to conduct myself off the field, you know, mm. just little tips along the way. I still and went off the rails a few times. It didn't stop me going off the rails. But I mean, I yeah. think it was, he, he, was, he gave me a good grounding. Yeah. And, it was, and he, to have someone like him as well, who's gone on with his experience that he's got now in the game, to have him around me when I was 16, it was a big help for me, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and of course then, when, when you were at Everton with him and you had a kind of a fairly traumatic time in your life, he looked after you very well at that stage as well. Didn't yeah, he? I mean, I think when I first signed at Everton, I mean, I, I, you look back at it now and I think that... Um, it, it, I signed for the right club at the right time. I mean, Everton is a, is a, it's a remarkable club, really, just for the people that surround the, surrounding the first team. David Moyes created something very special there as well. And I think the club itself, the supporters and everyone, it's, it's a special club. But after Elsa was born and, of course, then when she was diagnosed with Down syndrome, I, was, I wasn't in a great place for quite a long time. But I think he nurtured me. Probably he knew my character. He knew what I was like. I had friends around me as well um, who was very close to me. So I think... Mm. I think at that time in my life, that's why I'll always be inde indebted to him, just yeah. for how he, how he treated me and how he nurtured me through, certainly those early weeks after, after Elsie was born, yeah. Because it, it is, anyone who's been in that situation, we know, it's, it's yeah, you're know, in a you terrible state yourself, of shock. Yeah. But listen, you wrote, uh, you wrote very eloquently in the book about, um, and I, I, it's something that anyone who's been told this has an almost photographic memory yeah. of, of how they were told and when they were told. Yeah. You wrote about how you were told, and it was rough enough, wasn't it? Just, yeah, I mean, just I, explain I, to people. I, again, I mean, I think that there's a, there's a lot of education, I think, now for parents um, when, when, you do, when you do have a child with Down syndrome or any sort of disability now, but I, I don't really think that the, the can, doctors know how to really communicate that to parents. And I think we were told, we were literally just, we were asked the question, D does Elsie, um, does she resemble anyone, uh, either you or... Oh, my wife, Laura, does she resemble you? And I just kind of chirped up and just said, yeah, we, she, she kind of looks a bit like Laura when she was a baby. And he said, oh, it's very interesting you say that because, you know, she, has, she looks like she's showing signs of, of having Down syndrome. And the way that he put what, it to was us he like that... trying to trick you? Well, it was. It was, it, 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 it was, incredible, it was an incredible way to, to put it to someone. Yeah. When I think back as well how it was put, and um, again, it, there was no real feeling for how we were feeling at that time. There was no real sensitivity with, within, that, within that moment because... Yeah. I think the room was very, very quiet for, for a number of minutes, which you know seems like forever, I suppose, at that, in, in that moment. But there was no real feeling for us, I think, at that time. And um, I ended up just asking him, look, to leave us alone and so we can maybe get on with it ourselves at that particular time. But it definitely felt like a grieving process for, for yeah. us at that, at that particular time, definitely, yeah. yeah. Which is strange to say now, but that's how we felt yeah, at that's that particular it, time. Yeah, that's it, because like you said in the book even, like, it felt like the end of the world. And yeah. That, and that's... 
it does feel like that. Yeah. And you almost feel guilty for that afterwards, yeah, don't you? For thinking, this is, you know, I without, shouldn't have felt that. But, but you do at the time, yeah. it feels like the end. Without a moment. doubt. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guilt, uh, uh, certainly maybe even so much now I feel it, how I felt at that particular time. Because, you know, you, you've, got a, you've got a beautiful daughter there, yet it's hard to accept your own daughter in many respects. And, mm. and, and it's difficult. It's a difficult time it is. It, it's, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it's something that it's hard to come to terms with that, I think, at that time. But, again, looking back now, it's ten years on, and mm. now she's just Elsie. She's just, she's just yeah. my daughter, and it's, she's, she's a wonderful little girl. And I think, you know, there's probably a certain amount of guilt from me from, from that side from, uh, from ten years ago. Yeah, yeah. but look, you, you weren't to know, and, yeah. and, and, and that was it. Um, there was something else I was interested in as well, which was, because, you know, I think there tends to be a thing where, a lot of the time, the mother is then left... Yeah, with the baby, looking at the baby every day, involved in all, mm. and there's going to be a lot of medical stuff going on and everything. And the man really is able to go out to work yeah. and kind of get away from it. And, yeah. and you did throw yourself into the football then, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I honestly think I probably had my best spell in my career yeah. after Elsie was born. And around Elsie being born and certainly afterwards, I think I had my best spell in my career. And I, I genuinely don't know why that was. Maybe it was me, like you say, they get away from it, I suppose, get away from what was, what was reality in my, in my home life. And um, not long after, I met up with the Island squad straight away after that, really. And, you know, ev everything seemed to go well for me at that particular time for some reason. I don't yeah. know, maybe someone was watching over me. Yeah, I don't know, maybe but it it's because was... you get a bit of focus as well on what's important. Possibly, and and, possibly, you know, yeah, possibly. Yeah. And, I, and I, I mean, again, it was just, it was, it was a good period for me professionally at that time, yeah. I really enjoyed being on the pitch. I really enjoyed being on the training ground as well at that, uh, uh, during that, yeah. maybe probably 18 months, two years. And you, you talk about a few little ways in which it changed you. Um, mm. Little things like you became quite emotional yeah. after Elsie was I born. Mean, I th I, I, certainly initially after Elsie was born, I, I, there was a lot of crying. There was a lot of crying in my life. I think certainly at that time, certainly initially. I remember Lee Carsley, who was another Irish international, he, he was... He, he was one of my best friends anyway, Lee. We're very, very close now. He, he had, he's got a son, Connor, with Downs. And uh, he came to see me in hospital that night when, uh, when we found out after Elsie was born. And um, so anyway, he came out to me. I remember holding back the tears because I didn't want to show him how emotional I was. I didn't want to cry because I felt as though I'd be letting him down when he came out to see me. So mm. I think there was a... During, again, that period, there was certainly initially a lot, very emotional. And I'm probably and actually, still, if, if, it's still with me now, I suppose, as well. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you used to cry at the X Factor and stuff like that. Yes, then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Any opportunity, yeah, basically. That, that, <laughs> Yeah, I'm at pain to say that, yeah, but I do, yeah. When, yeah. when the music plays, now I go, I'm like, a, I'm a blubbering <laughs> yeah. wreck, yeah. The, fu the funny thing about Lee Carsey as well is he wasn't able to play the next day. He asked David Moyles to, to, to Yes, to that's it. I mean, off, he, he? he was just coming back from injury at that time, so I think he had a game, a reserve game, that day, I think it was the following day after Elsa was born, yeah, and he just that luckily couldn't play. It was just, it, it, I think it was an emotional time for all my teammates. I'd only just, I hadn't been at the club that long as well, but I'd yeah. become really emotionally attached to a lot of my teammates then, who I'm still very good friends with now, more so Lee, but I think that the, I think the whole squad w was, was shook up a little bit after Elsie was born as well, and I know that the, the manager was and his immediate coaching staff as well, but I think, I think at the time it brought a lot of people closer together as well. Yeah. There's, there was another interesting thing that changed in you as well, and I might have misunderstood this, but did you stop going to Mass after Elsie was born? Uh, yeah, it's probably, yeah, it's probably it's, perhaps maybe could be worded differently, I suppose. Well, but I, I think over time, when I got up, I mean, I, I never missed Mass till I was probably about 25, 26. Never missed Mass ever. I went every Sunday, or within reason, unless I had a game or whatever it was where... Uh, where factors influenced me where I couldn't go. I mm. think, yeah, I used to go all the time. I, I, I don't think it was down to Elsie. I'm probably thinking back and probably wasn't. I think it's probably as I got a little bit older and different thoughts in my own head. I don't know, but, yeah, I still consider myself a, a Catholic. I, I, still, I still go to Mass now and again, not as much as I should. Yeah, but you're not angry at God over... No, Elsie no, nothing anything. like that. Nothing like that, no, no. Um, yeah. I just think it's just circumstances probably with me and probably how okay. I've changed okay. over the years. Okay. And how's she doing now? Yeah, Elsie's great. She's ten. Um, got a lovely sister in Isla as well, who's eight. The two of them are great. Wonderful little girls, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And, and like, is she is a source of joy now in your life rather than yeah, something to Elsie's be sad Elsie's just about. Elsie. She's just, yeah. she's just, she's just my little girl. And that's how it, how it is, you know. Um, 
you know, there's, there's little messages, I suppose, as well as you, as, you, as, you, as you move along through your life. And I've got very close links with, uh, with the Down Syndrome Association over in England and uh, Down Syndrome Ireland and even the Down Syndrome Centre over here as well. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of people I've come into contact with, a few really good, special people as well. Um, and, um, yeah, she's a, she's a great girl and she certainly... She's certainly given me a lot more, but I think any parent would say that with the children as well. I think she's just Elsie, and that's it. Hmm. Okay. Listen, it was great talking to you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Kevin Caban. <laughs> and uh, that's Kevin's book, Killer, and it, it's a fantastic read on, on uh, over here. It's a fantastic read on, uh, on a lot of levels. It's out in paperback now. now